Adobe Premiere Pro has a lot of built-in transitions, but if you're looking to spice up your transition game, you might want to try creating custom transitions in Adobe After Effects. Hey everyone, this is Mason from Filtergrade, and today I'm going to show you the fundamentals of transitions in After Effects and how to create some cool ones that you might see in videos you watch every day. We'll be starting with some basic ones, transitions that exist as presets in Premiere Pro already, and then working up to some advanced transitions that require After Effects specifically. To master transitions, we'll be utilizing keyframing, masking, and the graph editor tool, which uses curves in a similar way as the pen tool. We'll be specifically using keyframing for a lot of the examples in this video, and it'll involve four keyframed points. The first keyframe is a starting point, and will be set to the normal properties of your clip. The second keyframe is the center of the transition and will be set to the highest or lowest value in your transition. Your third point will be at the exact same time and set to the same exact values, except it will be applied to your second clip, the one you're transitioning into. And then your final keyframe point is your end point, which will likely have the same values as your very first keyframe, and of course applied to the end of your second clip. So we're going to start with something that you probably use in Adobe Premiere Pro almost every time you make a video, and that's a fade or a cross dissolve. So we have our top clip here and our second clip here, and to do this, we're going to have to cross them over a little bit. So now our second clip is under the first one, and we're going to open up our transform properties, and we're gonna set the opacity. We're gonna put a keyframe uh, right here. This will be just a quick one. And then that's set to 100, move to the end of this clip, and set it to zero. And that gives us this so far. All right, that's pretty fast. Let's, let's make it a full second. So we'll just move that keyframe over there. So now we have this long fade. Another thing you can do with these keyframes is to ease it in. The easiest way to do this is to select all your keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and say easy ease in. All right, now we're going to do a basic wipe. So let's open the transform settings of our top level, go to the beginning of this transition, set the position, and then we're going to go to the end of it. And then we're gonna do a little bit of math here uh, this is a 1920 by 1080 piece of footage, and we're going to add our width to the position. So 960 plus 1920, and you can just type in that math and After Effects will do it for you. And now that moves across the screen right out of place. But you probably don't want your transition to look like this. If you do, then you're done. But you probably want the bottom layer to move with the top layer. So we're going to take this and we're going to subtract 1920, set a keyframe, and then set the final keyframe to positive 960, and now they'll move in together. So that's a simple wipe transition. And then of course you can select them all, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease in, to get a smoother effect. To add to the effect, and really any of these, you can toggle on motion blur, and then when the layers animate, it'll have a motion blur that makes it seem a little bit more smooth. Now we're going to do a wipe again, but we're going to use masking for it. So we have our clips in the same place, but we are going to create a line, and we're going to use that to wipe to our next layer. So let's grab our rectangle tool. We're gonna zoom out a little bit, and we're going to make our rectangle. Let's fill that with white and no stroke. So now we have our layer and we're going to put it over to the side and then let's find where our clips cross over and we'll set the position right here and go to the end of the transition And we're gonna move it over here. And then let's continue moving it just right to the edge. So we're going to use a mask to follow this line. So make sure you have your top layer selected, click the rectangle tool, and then create a mask. Now we're going to animate this mask. So 
open up your mask transform properties. So now we can set a keyframe for the mask path. Go to our next point. And then simply move the mask all the way to the end. And now when we play it back, we can see that that layer disappears along with the mask. And of course we can select all these and say easy ease in to make it a little smoother. And then we can turn on motion blur. And now let's see that with the line. Now the line has motion blur as well, makes you not really notice any inconsistencies or problems with the transition. Makes it a whole lot smoother. So that is a basic wipe with a line. Super basic transitions that are a lot of fun and pretty easy to do. Now we're going to go to something more advanced. Now we're going to do what's called a pump transition. So we're going to go where the two clips transition, make sure we're on the top layer, press S to get into our scale, and type in something like 150. You're just gonna to wanna to zoom in and then keyframe that. Now we're gonna go about half a second back in time, and we're gonna set the scale back to 100. So now we have this. We have that slight zoom. And now on our second bottom layer, we're gonna to go to the first frame of that, open up our scale settings, set the very first frame to 150, and once again, go about half a second. Set it to 150, keyframe that, go about half a second forward, and set it back to 100. So now we have this. So this is going to pump in to the first layer and come out of the second layer. So now we're going to select all these points, right click, and easy ease in. Let's go ahead and open the graph editor, and if you click on the scale, you can see these lines here. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the curves so that they speed ramp differently. So we're going to go ahead and grab this curve and make it a little bit like this. So it's a lot sharper of an incline. And as you can see, that has a nice speed ramp into it. So now let's go into the other one and change this curve to be the same. And now when we play it back, we get a nice smooth ramp up into the speed and then back out of it. And as a final touch, we're going to make sure that motion blur is applied to both layers. And that way, when we run through it, we can see that it has a nice blur effect to make it look more natural. And that's it, that's a pump. That's a super common effect transition that people put into videos and it's that easy, it takes seconds. Now we're going to do what's called a pan crop. So, firstly, we're gonna to go to our effects and we're going to grab motion tile and apply that to both of our clips. We're going to check to mirror edges on both of those, but for the values, we'll get to those later. So now let's go to our first clip and about half a second for our transition, we're going to set the scale to 100%. And then we're going to go right before the cut and set it higher. Let's start at around 180, but you can adjust that as you see fit. And now we're going to go to the first frame of the second clip. We're going to adjust the scale. This one's actually going to be lower. So let's set it to something like 70. And now here's where we can change the motion tile settings. So we can just grab those until they're big enough to cover the whole frame. In this case, it's about 150 each way. So that's great. So now that'll cover any black space in the transition. So let's keyframe that scale, then go half a second into the future, and then set it back to 100% scale. So now we have this, which is similar to the pump, except in this case, we're going in both times. So now we're going to grab all the keyframes, set to easy ease in. Now let's open up that graph editor again, and we're going to do the same thing we were doing before. So let's make these lines super aggressive. And now we'll get this. 
So that'll make them start fast and then slow down. And if you want the reverse to happen, you can just reverse all of these nodes for the opposite effect. Now we're going to do a rotation transition. So again, we're going to have the motion tile added and we're going to be using that again. So let's go ahead and keyframe half a second before the cut, press R for rotation. We're gonna set that keyframe at zero and then we're gonna to go to the final frame and set the rotation to minus 90. And we already have the output height adjusted on motion tile, so we're good to go there. And now we have this rotation. Now go to the rotation settings for the bottom clip, half a second in the future, keyframe zero at the end, go to the very first frame and do positive 90 degrees. And then once again, the motion tile is already on. So now we have this. It's like a continuous rotation. And as you can see, we're gonna have to adjust the motion tile both directions to make that cover everything. So just make sure you don't have any black space during the rotation. And now we're going to select all those nodes and we're going to easy ease in all the keyframes. So for added effect, let's go ahead and turn on motion blur. So now we have that blurred effect. As you can see, it looks a little weird, so we're gonna have to mess with the graph again. So let's go ahead and open that graph and we're going to adjust these down. And now we can see it goes how we want. It ramps in and then ramps back out. Another very common transition that you see all the time in videos. These transitions should have set you up with the basics. So now you can try experimenting with whatever transitions you want and you have that knowledge to go forth and make something awesome. That's all the transitions we have for you today. If you want to see more in the future, including more advanced transitions, let us know in the comments below. Then make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you all in the next After Effects tutorial video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for professional LUTs, Lightroom desktop and mobile presets, Premiere Pro templates, and more photo and video education, visit filtergrade.com today.